Hi guys and welcome to another kit review. So today we're having a look at a kit from ICM in 135th scale. It is their Capitan Saloon World War II German staff car. The kit number is 35475. Now this, as you can see, is an Opel Capitan car, four-door saloon, produced in the late 1930s. It was basically uh, Opel's mid-range luxury car at the time. And of course, at the beginning of the war, or just before actually, the uh, German military decided that they needed a lot more staff cars for their officers, generals, etc. So they requisitioned civilian vehicles for the job until they had their own purpose built. So as you can tell, this one in particular is a Luftwaffe registered vehicle in uh, overall dark yellow with green and brown spots and it looks like a little bit of on the colouring orangey red which is unusual in an alpine setting so beautiful bit of artwork night like this one now this kit came out in 2012 okay so ICM has brought out quite a few um, vehicle kits like this and this is part of their collection so let's have a look at the rest of the box like i said beautiful artwork okay so on the side and here we go brief history of the vehicle 1938 to 1940 it says opal produced 25,300 of which 17,000 odd were saloons so they were quite prevalent tells you how many parts it has how big it is Okay, ICM's address in the Ukraine. That faded little sticker there is their distributor in Kowloon. Okay, 14 plus as usual. And on the other side, three views of the car itself in a Luftwaffe registration with just overall dark yellow and green splotches. And again, 14 plus in different languages. All right, so that's the box that's the cover art let's if I can get this off there we go have a look so usual really sturdy ICM box let's open her up and what we have is if I can get it out one bag nothing else in the box one bag containing instructions sprues everything so in a second i'll open this bag and we'll have a look at the instructions and the decals and carry on from there okay, so let's have a look at the instructions first again in ukrainian and english you have brief history of the vehicle Technical specifications, what its weight was, maximum speed, 125 kilometers an hour. That would be on the road. Range, 400 kilometers, so that's not too bad. Color callouts here are purely in Model Master colors, okay? And you have 6, 10, 13 color suggestions right here. As I said, all Model Master, so you'll have to look up your own manufacturer's particular color range cautions when you use uh, glue and paint don't put it near open flame etc don't blow yourself up and don't cut your fingers off all right and that's the front page let's see where we are all right so fairly straightforward you literally have three sprues two large ones with the body and the frame on it and one with all your clear parts on it okay Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Okay, well, that comes apart. That's an interesting way to do it. Not stapled. Okay, so let's have a look. Engine. So this looks to be quite a complex engine construction here. 
as you can see it does have a lot of small parts to it so if there's a possibility of leaving the, the bonnet open to display the engine then um, that's not a bad idea otherwise if you can't and it won't be missed you could use the engine in a workshop diorama just a suggestion okay so construction of the engine takes literally well let's see now four parts for the engine then the underframe another two parts drive shaft okay engine goes on the underframe and then we start on the actual body so this is your floor pan in a wheel wells front of the vehicle including already putting in the windscreen okay battery etc so the details that are going in revision mirror instrument details and things like this pedals etc are really nice so far and there are color call outs limited color call outs i should say through the instructions then we get to putting the rest of the, the americans call them fenders mud guards whatever you want to call them onto the body shell okay and they do have an inner and an outer so, so you're aware okay seats so this is fairly straightforward and not such a hard construction but it does have a fair bit of painting and as you can see you do get a choice between colors depending on whether you're going to have a civilian or a Wehrmacht one or a Luftwaffe one the choice of color for the seats is entirely up to you there would be a lot of variation okay over what they say 17,000 cars an awful lot of variation in the colors source pipes going on so it looks to be the most complex part is the engine and the running gear tires are literally just two part so we'll have a look at the treads when we have a look at the sprues front going on radiator okay that's all one section bonnet and as you can see it doesn't look like the bonnet opens or has the capacity to be opened so if you wanted to display the engine you would have to look at your internet references as to what modifications you'd have to do to have that bonnet up i'd say it would just fold back but it would have to have some bonnet stays or something in it okay two-part steering wheel which icm seems to love i don't and then it's just a matter of putting the doors together putting in the window glass so if you wanted the windows down you'd have to do again your reference checks four doors um, the sides of the actual body compartment are separate as well which could lead to um, fitting issues if it's not straight including the top so that complete construction area here would be my biggest concern getting the sides in the right place and the top it's unfortunate that they did it that way rather than like most manufacturers making that literally one piece on this kit anyway it is what it is rear windows go in number plates go on and she's done 22 steps and it's done the most complex part of this would be the painting to make sure that you painted the inside completely before you got to the outside and then we get to unfortunately just black and white this one here germany 1940 russia winter 42 so it's all over white i would paint it all over either dark gray or luftwaffe gray or something like that and then whitewash it rather than just painting it completely white like they seem to have done here and then you've got russia summer 43 and italy summer 43 which is your 
all over yellow with green spots on it. Literally, the camouflage scheme is entirely up to you. These vehicles were used in every theatre of war, so therefore you could literally paint them almost any camouflage that your heart desired. Okay, so that's the instructions. Fairly straightforward. Let's have a look at the decals. So as I said, this is a 2012. Okay, so you've got number plates for Luftwaffe. That appears to be a civilian vehicle. And also Fairmark here, number plates as well. Plus, of course, these markings here are your Opal badges, etc. for the um, hubs on your wheels. Okay. A couple other small unit badges and things on here, which is really nice. So, I won't say they're super duper uh, complex, but they will give you a really nice model with some nice markings on it. Okay, so that's the decals. Let's have a look at the sprues. So let's have a look at the sprues. So first up, the important ones, the clears. Okay, so first off, let me just say that these outer windows are not sh shown on the sprue layout and therefore are not used in this vehicle. Okay, so just the inner ones, where you've got your front windshield and your side windows and back windows on here, okay? And they look fairly clear, even though they were in with all the other, the other two sprues, I should say. They're not scratched. And yes, they are really nice and clear. Okay, I do like these because a bit more for these spares box. You never know when you're going to need them. Okay, so that's the clears. Next one we will have a look at is this one. Okay, and unfortunately because this was all in together, there is the tires. That's the one that just stayed on the uh, sprue. Okay, there's your outers with the hubs, wheel <laughs> hubcaps already on okay so the tires are literally two parts this is your inners and I'll move that out of the way for a second see if I can get this up close for you there you go okay so they do have oh, don't, come on focus there you go they do have a reasonable kind of tread on them not yeehaw but at least they have a tread and not too much cleanup okay so put those there Let's have a look at that sprue again. As I said, tyres, outers, engine, okay, running gear and suspension. This is the back of the vehicle, which I suspect, yeah, it will be used on this vehicle. Two-part steering wheel, which is always a bit, mm-hmm, and your seats and doors. These are the inner doors, okay. So let's have a close up. So you've seen the tyres. Let's have a look at the doors. All right. So a little bit of detail on the inside of the door, but no real texture. The seats. Okay, the seats are just plain. There is, as you can see, sorry, get that in focus where. No texture on the seats whatsoever. So... There would be texture. Um, I think just painting it and making it look like some sort of texturing or wear might be okay. Seeing as you won't see much of it inside the car. No, that is the back 
of the vehicle, the boot, with the opal badge on it. The bit that always gets me is this. Two-part steering wheel. They are not easy because there isn't much overlap between that point there and that point there for you to glue. So a lot of care on that. Exhaust pipe. Tires. So the tires don't appear to have any markings on them at all, although they're nicely defined hubcaps. Engine. I do like the engine. It's nicely detailed and it is okay. A lot of parts. Okay, you've got your exhaust manifolds, your intakes, etc. So that's a nicely detailed engine which appears to be, unfortunately, built out of sight so you can't see it. So that's a shame. So possibly putting the bonnet on but not gluing it might be an option. Okay, so that is the engine, tyres and running gear. Move these Lucy's out of the way. Let's have a look at, okay, and as you can see, this is the body, outer doors, firewall, bonnet, okay, this is your bottom of your passenger compartment, all right, these here are the back left and right sides of the vehicle, okay, of the saloon body, mud guards of course and the top and back so unfortunately and i would have loved to have seen this and those one piece it means that you will have a joined and if it's not square it's going to be painful okay so let's have a look up close well hinge detail is quite nice you don't expect texture because this was a civilian sedan I do like the fact that that drill part is open, although this main drill here is not, but you um, might be able to do it if you are very careful with your knife, you might be able to open that up as well. Okay, so really nice. There is a little bit of flow line in the plastic but nothing dramatic and nothing that will affect the painting the bonnet really nicely done nice detail okay inside there's no texture for like carpet or something like that but that's something you'll just have to paint over anyway so again really crisp no flash, but it is unfortunate that they decided to build the body the way they did. I guess perhaps there's a reason behind it. Okay, that's the inside of your mud guards with detail on it. That's really nice. Let's have a look at that's the inside. There is nothing to see there because it all gets put in. Same for the doors. So all of this is literally out of sight, apart from that. Okay, so that's really nice detail. That's something that a lot of kit manufacturers wouldn't put in for their mudguards, etc. So I do like that. But yeah, as far as interior is concerned, there is nothing except, as you can see, there are a bit of cleanup to be done. 
I'm not sure if you'll see that or not, but it will affect how the parts fit together. So you will have to clean that up. Same goes for the inside mud guards here, etc. I would definitely clean everything up because, especially if you're going to leave the bonnet open, you need to clean those up too. Fill it, sand it, smooth it down. Okay, so no flash, but a fair bit of those molding injection points on the doors. So you'll have to clean all that up before you'll be able to put the interiors on. Okay, so that is the last sprue. And literally, that's all there is to it. Two sprues, and a sprue clears, and some decals. Okay, so that is ICM's Capitan Saloon. As I said, issued in 2012. Okay, so she's only eight years old. Um, really nice engine, really nice detailed uh, running gear. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't give you an option of leaving the bonnet open but I'm sure that's something that you could probably have a look at online and you may have to add some hinge parts or something but you might be able to get away with that one okay so that brings us to the end of this review hopefully you've got something from this one as well um, I know I have I've seen this and um, I don't think it would be uh, too hard a build just so long as you take your time with the fiddly bits. Okay, so, as usual guys, that's all there is today. And until next time, take it easy, and I'll see you later.